Guys, one of the most frustrating things that can happen to you as a content creator is when you spend hours doing a job, filming everything, and then while you're doing the editing process, you find out that you've got corrupt files and you've lost some of the footage. Well, that's kind of what happened here. Uh, I did lose some of the footage. Fortunately for me, well, I don't want to say it wasn't really important footage, but the first bit of footage I lost, as you're going to see in this video, is where I was putting the brake pads back into the calipers and putting the calipers back on there. I was able to kind of just insert some text to kind of tell you what to do. Um, and if you go, you know, later on in the video, if you watch when I do the same process on the rear, you can kind of put two and two together and figure that out. Unfortunately, I also lost all of my footage from the point I set the vehicle down uh, after doing the rear brakes and, you know, the whole bed in process and all that. So I'm going to kind of go over that at the end of the video. Hopefully, uh, there's still enough here to help you guys out, uh, kind of show you what to do and make it not the shittiest video ever. I, I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're not working on chaos theory. We're not working on the China vet. Today, we are actually working on the avalanche. So you guys know I use Abby. That's what we call our avalanche. Uh, I use Abby to pull the car trailer to pull all these other cars to the track. Well, the avalanche is a good family vehicle and you know, it's good for pulling like small boats, campers, stuff like that but when you start pulling a car on a trailer with it on a regular basis let's just say there's a lot of shortcomings that come to light so we're actually going to try to address one of those today and that is the brakes we've actually been having an issue with the brakes on this thing for a while you know the whole ju -ju 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 -ju. <laughs> uh, the whole twerking thing while we're slowing down uh, since we started pulling the car trailer with it it's gotten a lot worse so today what I decided to do is instead of just, you know, changing out the brakes, I decided to actually do a little upgrade. And this is what we got, guys. We got a set of four drilled and slotted rotors and some carbon ceramic brakes, hopefully low dust and, uh, you know, really good bite on these uh, drilled and slotted rotors. And these are from Brake Motive on eBay. Now, I did a lot of research before I bought these. Uh, Turns out there's a lot of people using these and really happy with them. So what I'm going to do today shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm just going to show you guys how to install these today on the Avalanche. The process should be the same for Tahoe, Suburban, Escalade, uh, maybe even some Silverado. So I'm going to show, go through the process here, show you guys how to put these on real quick and how to break them in. Now, before we start, I do want to say I am going to put a link to this in the video description. So if you guys want to pick up some of these yourself and at the time I bought these, it was one hundred and sixty five dollars for the entire set. So, you know, definitely a great budget upgrade. But I do want to say this. 2007 is a transitional year for Chevrolet in both their trucks and SUVs. And what I found was there were a lot of listings for brakes from 99 through 06 and brakes from 08 through 2014 or 2013 depending on truck or suv there was only one listing like this listing right here was actually specifically for the 2007 only model and if you guys know what the difference is between the 2007 and literally any other model chevy truck as far as the braking goes uh, you know, feel free to put it in the comments down below. I personally don't know, but you know, hopefully I got the right application for, well, for my application. So enough flapping my gums. Let's go ahead, get out here, get these put on. What you're gonna need for the front, obviously you're gonna need the parts that I just showed you. Uh, you're also going to need some brake cleaner. You're gonna need a breaker bar. I have a short one here and a long one over there. You're going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need an 18 and a 19 millimeter socket. And you're going to need a T30 Torx bit. Obviously, you're also going to need a jack and a jack stand. You may be asking what the big uh, channel locks are for here. 
Guys, I use these channel locks to compress the pistons and the calipers. You can also just use your screwdriver and wedge it in between the old brake caliper, or I mean the uh, old brake pad and the caliper, and use that for leverage to compress the pistons if you don't have this or you don't have the proper tool. Yes, they actually make a proper tool for this. And to get your wheels off, you're gonna need a 7 8 socket. So first things first, before you jack your vehicle up, you wanna go ahead, use your screwdriver, pop the center piece off. Yours may be different, depends on which wheels you have. And use your breaker bar to go ahead and break all these lug nuts loose. Now you're gonna jack the vehicle up by the frame. You gotta get under there, guys. Make sure you're on the frame. And get your jack stand under there. Now what I like to do is I like to lower the car down to where it's just touching the jack stand. But I'll leave some tension on the jack. It's just kind of like a second safety. And now you can finish removing your lug nuts. And yes, I'm cheating. Now you have two 19 millimeter bolts that retain your brake caliper to your brake caliper, caliper bracket. Sorry guys. So that's this guy. And down here, this guy. You're gonna wanna take both of those This is one of those areas where your breaker bar might come in handy because these can be stubborn sometimes. Now we'll slide our caliper off. You may have to use your screwdriver to break it loose there. We'll take him off. We'll just set him up here on top of the upper control arm. All right, now at this point, what you're gonna wanna do is remove the two bolts holding this bracket on. So you've got this bolt back here, and you've got this bolt down here. Both of these are 18 millimeter, and once you get those off, you'll be able to remove this bracket. I like to go ahead and leave the old brake pads on there because it kind of gives me something to go by when I'm matching up the new brake pads to make sure I'm putting the right one on the right side. Again, this is gonna be a job for a breaker bar. This guy's on here tight. I may even have to get a hammer and smack on the old breaker bar a little bit. After a little hammer work, we got them broken loose. Finish them off with our ratchet here. We'll set our bracket out of the way. Now on your rotor, you'll see you have a T30 Torx bit right here. So we're gonna take that out. Off comes the old rotor. Now see, the new rotors are actually marked passenger side and driver side. Uh, they're marked that way because the grooves are cut in a different direction uh, based on which way the wheel is gonna be spinning. So we'll go ahead at this time, we'll take our new rotor, we'll line up one of the divots here for the uh, little T30 screw that we just took out. We'll line that up with the divot hole on our bearing hub here, and we'll slide this on. And we'll put our little T30 screw back in here to hold the rotor in. Next, we're gonna take some brake cleaner, spray off our rotor, front and back, and wipe it down to remove any kind of grease now these rotors, like I said, they're anodized, so they don't rust, at least not until they're bedded in. 
uh, they don't rust so they don't ship these with grease on them so like generally when you buy rotors in an auto parts store they've got a lot of that uh, grease on them to prevent them from rusting while they're on the shelves uh, you don't really have to worry about that with these with these you're pretty much just trying to get any grease off that you might get on you know from your hands while you're installing them so it may be necessary uh, after you get the caliper and everything on it may be necessary to go through and maybe touch up in a few spots just in case you got grease on but they're cleaned off so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our caliper brackets back on here yes they've still got the old brake pads on them just like I said earlier so we're going to go ahead and put these on and we're going to snug them up but we're not going to torque them yet yeah and i guess i forgot to mention earlier you are going to need a torque wrench if you want to do this properly now these two brackets uh once you get them snugged up the reason i say to snug them up before you torque them uh is just to kind of center the bracket once you get them snugged up you're going to want to tighten those up to 129 foot pounds <sighs> Whew, that's a lot of foot pounds boys and girls Now, like I said at this point, if you've touched your rotor anywhere with grease on your hands, you're going to want to go ahead, take some brake cleaner, clean that off. If not, we can go ahead and put the wheel back on. run these lug nuts up snug while the wheel's off the ground then we're going to lower it back down to the ground and you're going to torque these down to 130 foot pounds put our centerpiece back on you'll note there's this prong sticking up on the centerpiece there are cutouts in the wheel so make sure you line that prong up with one of the cutouts use there we go moving on to the back once again we're going to want to go ahead pop our centerpieces off and loosen the lug nuts before we jack the vehicle up but on the rear end instead of just jacking one side up at a time what we're going to do is we're going to get our jack under the rear end uh, right here under the center section the differential and we're gonna go ahead and jack it up And we're just gonna put jack stands underneath both sides of the axle So we'll have the whole rear end off the ground at the same time Instead of having to just do one side at a time Now it's always a good idea to chop the front wheels for this because you can't really use the emergency brake for obvious reasons The back wheels are gonna be off the ground So go ahead and chop your front wheels, especially if you're not on a level surface Okay, so on the back side you're pretty much going to need all the same tools except you are not going to need your t30 torx bit here anymore and you're not going to need your 19 millimeter socket what you are going to need is to add a 13 millimeter socket and an adjustable wrench so same deal we'll go ahead finish getting the wheel off going to look in here and you know again it's kind of the same deal guys but this time we've got 13 millimeter bolts that are holding our caliper onto our caliper bracket and then this is where our adjustable wrench is going to come in 
you actually need to hold this guy right here while you're taking the 13 millimeter bolts out. Then once again, we're gonna use our screwdriver to kind of pry our caliper loose here. And set them up top out of the way. Then once again, we've got the caliper bracket bolts. We've got one here, and we've got one down here. And those are 18 millimeter and again those are going to be pretty tight guys but we're going to take them off and just like we did on the front we're going to leave our brake pads in the bracket here because we want to use them to make sure we're putting the right brake pads in the right place just have to brute force them a little bit I'm using my hand, but you know, you could tap on it with a hammer and it probably wouldn't hurt as bad. <laughs> Pull it back it off. Now unlock the front. You don't have the little Torx bolt holding the caliper on, or I mean uh, the rotor on. So we can just go ahead, wiggle him a little bit. Good tug, ought to pull it right off. Now these brake shoes look a little worn, but this is for the emergency brake only guys, so I'm not really worried about these. As long as there's a little pad there, that's really all that matters. These don't stop the vehicle, these just spread out and hold it and keep it from moving, you know, when you've got the emergency brake on, so. I do wanna make a note when you go to slide your new rotor on. If you can't seem to get the rotor on over these, there is a little adjuster right here. And you can actually take your screwdriver and prop it against here and use it to turn the wheel back and forth to adjust these in or out. So you may need to adjust them in just a little bit to get your rotor on. I don't know if I'm gonna have to yet or not, but we're about to find out. So we got our rear passenger side rotor here. Line it up, push it on, and it looks like it went on all the way. Yeah, I believe it's on all the way. So we're not gonna have to make any adjustments. So we're gonna go ahead, clean our rotor off. Again, I don't think this is really necessary on these, but if you're using just regular rotors from auto parts store, it's definitely gonna be necessary because they're gonna have the uh, the grease all over them. Now we're gonna take our bracket, we're gonna bolt it back on. Now it's still got the old pads in it, guys. Cause like I said on the front, and I said earlier, on this, there are slight differences in these pads. So we wanna make sure that we put the right pads in the right spot. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt our caliper bracket back on here and then we'll change the pads. Just like the front, I wanna snug these up and once they're both snugged, then we'll go back and torque them. Now, according to the book, we're gonna to torque these to 148 foot-pounds. Now that that's done, we can change our brake pads. So, we'll go ahead, pull this first one out, and you'll notice on this one, it's got a tab here, a tab here, and nothing else. So, if we look at this one, okay, we'll see it's got a tab here, and a tab here, no tab here or here, and it's got your little wear indicator. So that's obviously not the one we need. We'll grab this one and there you go, identical. It's got both tabs here, nothing else anywhere on it. So we'll slip this one in. All right, now we'll pull 
pull the back side off. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here or not. So we pull the back side off. And then we see this one has our little wear indicator here. It's kind of rusty. And it's got the tabs on the ends and no tabs in the middle. So that's obviously this guy. So I said it's very important to make sure you're putting the right pad in the right spot that's both side to side and left to right and get him to snap in here there we go and now just like we did on the front we're going to take our caliper we're going to put our old pad we're going to set that in the caliper take our clamps or as i said earlier you can use a c clamp if you like i'm having a little issue here and it's mainly because the camera is right here in my lap in my way so <laughs> i'm suffering for you people here I'll hold it like that He's adjusted out. Put it on the caliper just like that. And we'll compress our piston back in. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, our pistons and our piston boot on some of these are in pretty piss poor shape. And I may actually end up going back at some point and just replacing these calipers as well. They're really not that expensive. But anyway, now that that's in there, we're going to slide this guy back on. Same way it came off. Put our bolts back in. And these are going to get tightened to 35 foot pounds. Put your wheel back on. Go ahead and start your lug nuts and snug them up while the wheel's off the ground. Then you want to lower the vehicle and torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Okay guys, so we're at the end. Uh, this is the last part that I lost. I lost all the footage of me doing the bed in on the brakes. I wanna go ahead and say the brakes work great. Uh, it got rid of all the vibration, you know, all the twerking as I referred to it. Uh, you know, the vehicle seems like it's stopping a lot easier and with a lot less pedal effort now. Uh, so I'm just gonna go over the bed in process right now. What Brake Motive recommends is they recommend that uh, you want to keep the brakes hot during the bed-in process. Number one, you do not want the vehicle to ever come to a complete stop. But what you need to do, you need to rapidly get the vehicle up to 40 miles per hour and do five hard slowdowns to about 10 miles an hour from 40 miles per hour. Uh, you want to do those in rapid succession. The, the whole point here is to get the brakes really hot. Uh, then immediately after doing that, you want to get the vehicle up to 35 and do moderate braking down to about five miles per hour. Again, never letting the vehicle come to a complete stop. You want to do that five times too. Uh, during that process, it is normal to smell the brakes, okay? So don't freak out. That's the whole point is to get them really hot so they bed into the rotors. Uh, after all that is done, again, without coming to a complete stop, 
at that point you want to drive the car you know around 40 50 miles an hour or faster uh, for at least five minutes to let the brakes completely cool after that the brakes should function as normal and they are completely bedded in so with that being said i would like to apologize to you guys one final time uh, i really had no control over it for some reason my gopro up here uh, it corrupted the footage uh, some of the footage in the middle some at the end of the video uh, i think it may be because the gopro was sitting out in the sun maybe it just got too hot uh, either way nothing i could really do about it but i think the majority of what you need to know is in the video to get the job done so with that being said i realize this isn't the type of video you're used to seeing where i'm doing more high performance stuff on the other vehicles here uh, <laughs> but hopefully you guys realize that you know, we can't always work on the race cars. Sometimes we have to work on the vehicle that actually takes the cars to the track. Now, every car in my stable is more than capable of driving to and from the track. That's not the point. The point is, uh, I like to trailer the cars, especially when I'm pushing them hard, uh, because there's always a possibility something's gonna break. And after you pay somebody to drive your street car home on a trailer two or three times, uh, it gets kind of annoying and gets kind of expensive. So that's why we trailer the cars to the track. Uh, that's why every now and then you see me doing these videos where I'm kind of working on the trailer or working on the car hauler itself, Abby. Anyway, I hope this video did help some of you guys out, some of you guys with avalanches or Tahoes that maybe want to upgrade the brakes. If it did, make sure you share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.